You know, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a, a CPA and I prepare taxes. And I feel like this morning I'm preparing a tax return with an IRS auditor sitting right there beside me. <laughs> so if the lights get kind of bright here and the sweat starts. You know, God made us with all these emotions, high, low, good, bad, called life. And this story has been pre-approved. Once again, pre-approved. Okay? Wednesday night was um, nose night, gross nose night or something along that. Um, Brian Young was walking around with these glasses and stuff hanging out of his nose, and, and that was for Awana. This might not have been my best idea, but it was an idea. I thought, you know, what happens if you put a plunger right here <laughs> on your nose, and then a roll of toilet paper out here? You, that, that would be a weird nose, I mean... I teach kindergarten, so they, they would think it's funny. It fit really well at home. Um, I got here and the, got kind of tangled up, and it just it didn't fit very right. anyway, anyway, once again, this is pre-approved. <laughs> okay. Carla was in Norfolk. Well, well, the first thing you have to remember is I used a new plunger, not a used <laughs> plunger. Carla happened to be in Yankton on Wednesday morning. So she went into Ace Hardware, looking at the plungers, picked up a small one, and went, hmm, would that make a good nose? Picked up the medium-sized one, and went, hmm, would that make a good nose? She picked up the large one, looked over to her left, and there was someone looking at her. <laughs> as she's bringing these plungers up to her face. The guy said, congested? It wasn't. <laughs> Once again, that story was pre approved. God made all sorts of emotions, and laughter is one, and laughter is very good. So, um, yeah. So, um, let's. Uh, Let's open a prayer. Well, Jesus, you made laughter, you made anger, you made highs and lows, and you made us. And you made us in your image, so that means you love a, a good laugh. That's awesome, Lord. So, If anything intelligent comes out, Lord, it's you. So just, these are your words. Fill me. And uh, how awesome you are. In Jesus' name, amen. So, <laughs> the good news is, um, we're going to talk about something that I know nothing about today. So, um, we are going to be in Genesis 20, or 32, verse 22, we're going to start at. And here's what I don't know. Oh. The headline says, Jacob wrestles with God. So when you think of wrestling, and here's what I have 
no, I, I know nothing of this. So when you think of wrestling, what do you think of? <laughs> Hulk Hogan. There's a lot of generation out there that are going, Henry, do you know who this is? All right. <laughs> you know, and, and when I was thinking of this message, I was thinking, you know, we're going to have video clips. And the next one was going to be of a sumo wrestler. But then I started watching video clips, and there was nothing I could find that you would want to put up on our church screen. (laughs) And then there's the more traditional wrestling. Once again, I, I I know nothing of wrestling. We're going to talk about wrestling. So... Think about such images as we, um, you know what, that, that's not a, don't think of such images as we read through this passage. Uh, think of God's word here. So, um, Genesis 32, verses 22 through 31. That night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Penal, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Penal, and he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of his hip, because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. So... um. Sorry, Dave, I, I think of you when I read that. <laughs> I thought of you a couple times, with, uh, with, but you're the new hip, so that's good. Um, so let's think about wrestling here for a second in this story. Um, so he sends his whole family across. He's alone. He's alone on the other side. And, and all of a sudden, this man comes up to him and wrestles him. Okay, in Hosea, it talks about uh, an angel. Um, In in various um, other places in the Old Testament, God shows up in the form of a man. And so this was, in essence, God in man or how he shows up or an angel. Okay, so he, he wrestles him. Okay. What's one of the things you know about wrestling? Maybe some that have wrestled? Two minutes is about as long as you can go. <laughs> That's one of the things I, when I read this, um, he wrestled all night. Whoa. Just, just a casual observation. That's amazing. He wrestled all night. Um, And it's interesting that, um, so this was God, and you know what? I'm not smart enough. If, If you have questions on this, ask Arden afterwards. How the man who was God said he could not overpower him. Somehow, I don't, I don't get all that, but... It, it's in the story um, that he wrestled him all night. And the man said, you know, uh, he realized he couldn't overpower him. And then he said, let me go. 
Um, so basically, Jacob has wrestled all night and is purely exhausted. Wrestling takes a lot of strength, a lot of power, and a lot of energy. And he is clinging to him, where Jacob, uh, in 26, says, uh, Jacob replied, I will not let you go until you bless me. And, you know, I picture this exhausted man wrestling, and all he's doing is hanging on, just hanging on, and says, bless me. Um, it's also interesting that, um, you know, these are, these are interesting points for later to ponder. You know, first of all, Jacob did this when he was alone. He sent his family across, and Jacob is all alone. Why he did that, um, you know, read the whole story. But anyway, Jacob is alone, and he is attacked at night. Are you ever alone at night and you get attacked with thoughts and stuff that, that, that are just weighing on you, trials and thoughts, and you're just starting to wrestle with your thoughts and you're, and that's an interesting time, alone and in the dark. That is your time to maybe wrestle with God. Sometimes you have to, you have to wrestle by yourself. Yes, we have a church community, a church body, but there are times when it's just you and God. You and God wrestling. You know, you can be wrestling over um, maybe a passage in Scripture you don't understand. You can be wrestling over um, life. That's usually what it is. It's usually life. Where you struggle, you wrestle, there's trials, there, there's things that have come in your life, and, and, and you just, you're just wrestling with God. Um, you're saying, why? Why? And in those times, you wrestle and struggle. Um, you know, another characteristic of wrestling, and I, and I like um, how verse 30 says it, it's because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Um, in wrestling, you're, you're face to face. You're heart to heart. You are focused all on your opponent. It's not like basketball. You hit the shot and you turn to the crowd and look at them. It's not like football where you make one play and you dance and celebrate like you won the Super Bowl. Wrestling face to face, heart to heart, you and God. Um... Wrestling between you and God face to face. And so many times, um, you know, the question of, you know, why? What is this all about? Wrestling with God. You know, wrestling makes you stronger. There's no doubt about it. When you wrestle, you become stronger. Um, and you start to link this to other passages. I think of the passage in James James chapter 1, verses uh, 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature, complete, and not lacking anything. So as I'm wrestling with God, there might be a trial, there might be something. And did, do you see what James says here? Consider it pure joy when you face trials. Whoa, I don't like that. Consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Another way to look at it is, I'm wrestling, you know what, I'm getting stronger, and this is one way of, you know what, I'm testing your faith, I'm seeing if your faith is getting stronger, because you know what, that is ultimately what we want. We want a deeper, longer, a longing to understand God and have a greater faith in Him. And this is saying, 
Consider it pure joy for when you face trials. Because the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature, complete, not lacking anything. You know what? When the coach teaches that, when he had practice at wrestling, you know what? He pushes them. He makes them go harder. He makes them go harder to the point of they don't think they can go anymore, but you know what? We're going to do it one more time. And it produces the stronger wrestler. And in this case, it's producing a deeper faith a stronger faith, and that wrestling with God. And I know one of the things about wrestling and questioning and trials and struggling with God, I mean, one of the, one of the um, things with, uh, in Genesis with, said was struggling, struggling with God. And I want to link back to last week's message where we talked about perseverance and prayer. And one of the things was ask, seek, knock. When I'm coming to God, I'm asking, I'm seeking, I'm knocking. And one of the ways we do that is we ask, we say, why? Why? Seeking God, why God? And our knock is, why God did you do this? Why did you allow that? You know, last week, I, I just, I felt, you know, we, we went through that passage and, and we made it so nice and rosy that, you know, we can come to God and, and we can, that, you know what, we come all prim and proper and we pray and, and you know, we, we knock and ask. No, there are many times in life when you know what, why God? And that knocking on the door is our head beating against it, our fists pounding on the door, or us kicking that door saying, why God? I don't understand, why, why? And you know what, that's okay. Because God, and that, that's wrestling, that's struggling with God, that's, that's getting you stronger. And in Luke, the, the passage that we looked at, you know what? He gave us the Holy Spirit to get us through that. What a great comfort there is in that, in the struggle, in the wrestling. When you're pounding on that door saying, why God, I don't understand it. Why did you do that? Do you realize what a faith-filled prayer you just made? In God, why did you do that? It's extremely faith-filled in the sense that, you know what? You went to God. What did you just do? You just acknowledged that he is the God that is in control of everything. By saying, God, why did you allow that? You're saying, you know what, God? I just recognize you are the God that's in control. That is a great faith-filled prayer. Don't be ashamed when you pray it. Don't be, oh, I have no faith because I'm going to God. And you know what? It's like wrestling. I'm getting in his face. And I'm saying, why, God? I don't understand it. That is so faith-filled because you know what? You're acknowledging God in heaven. You're acknowledging that he is in control. And yes, you're going to him. What's worse, what is more scary is when you turn and walk away and do not even shake your fist at God. That is when... I would get concerned. But it is faith-filled when you shake your fist at God and say, why? Kicking at the door is, I don't understand this. Um, because struggling and persevering and wrestling, you think about a relationship. Um, anybody here that's been married 40 plus, 50 plus years, some of the things they say is, you know what? In the hard times, in the trials, that's when we grew closer. And a lot of those times, is that, that's when you open up and are raw. And you know what? Even in a marriage, even with a friend, if you sometimes have an argument, that is not a bad thing. A lot of times, you are digging, you're peeling off layers in your heart and your soul, and you're exposing them, and you're learning more about that person, and you're growing deeper deeper, deeper in your relationship. 
Every married couple that has lasted 50, 40 years will tell you, you know what, in the hard times when we had the arguments, but in the, those hard times, those were the times that we really cemented together. And you know what? It's the same as when you're wrestling with God, struggling with God. I'm face to face with God, struggling. And those are the times when you grow deeper, stronger in your relationship to God. It's not a bad thing to go face to face with God. As long as, like the uh, verse said um, in Cornerstone, clothed in his righteousness alone. You stand before God clothed in Christ's righteousness. You are his child, and it's okay for the child to ask daddy why. Daddy, look at me. Daddy, I don't understand. I'm struggling. If you don't know Christ, now would be a good time to maybe consider that, that if I look in God's face, a holy God, and I do am not clothed in righteousness, I need Christ's righteousness. But also remember, it can be a little bit scary because if you look into the face of God, sometimes the why is, you know what, I have sin in my life. And I go face to face with God and there are times when God's going to point out something that you need to change in your life. Um, certainly not bad. Once again, I'm growing deeper in my faith through trials, stronger faith. And sometimes God takes those times, those wrestling, those struggling, those times of going face to face and um, saying, you know what, you need to change this. You need to do that. And that's okay, because those are the times I'm going deeper with God in my relationship. You know, you might say, well, I hear what you're saying, but what does this look like? What does this look like? Um, Psalm 13. We, uh, we spent what was it, a half a year, three quarters of a year, going through the life of David. And David wrote with Pastor Lane, and David wrote this psalm. So, you know, we know David's life. But you start looking at this psalm, and I want you to hear the why. I want you to hear the wrestle. I want you to hear the, the why, what's going on, God? There is passion and emotion as, as David writes this. And he says, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle? There's that wrestle word again. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? He's wrestling with God. He's struggling with God. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? Every day I have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer that face to face. I mean, you can, you can almost picture David saying, look at me. <laughs> That's like the little kid. I mean, you're sitting watching TV after a long, hard day or you're distracted and the kid comes in and grabs your face. Whoa, whoa, don't do that. And says, look at me, look at me. That's huge, that face-to-face, -face, whether I'm with God. And, and David is pouring out his heart here, and he's saying, Look on me and answer, O Lord, my God. Give light into my eyes, or I will sleep in death. My enemy will say, I have overcome him, and my foes will rejoice when I fall. If you have ever stood there and shook your fist at God and say, Why, God, I don't understand. Why did you allow this? Why are you doing this? You know what? David was there. I, I mean, you read through that and you just hear the emotion. And this is David, a, a man after God's own heart, just screaming at God saying, why? Look at me. Wrestling, wrestling. Now, when I've looked at this passage, I always assumed that the last two verses were put down much later. I just always assumed when I read it 
that, you know what, David came along a week later, a month later, years later, and, and, he, and he read this, and then he goes, hmm, wow, God, what, what you've done. And then he writes years later, but I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to me. I just always pictured that, you know what, here he is coming much later after wrestling and, and stuff like that, and he comes to that point and he, and he says, but I trust in you. I trust in you. Well, that might be right. I, I, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with that, going back and looking at your pain and remembering how God has worked in your life. But it's interesting, uh, a couple of the Bible commentators said the but I was very emphatic, very strong response right away, saying, you know what, I just poured out my, God, my heart to God. And like I said, this is the Bible commentators that I uh, was, was reading, and it, makes, it really makes sense. He goes through this, and then he... he he looks at his life, he looks at himself and says, but I trust in God. I might question him, I might be shaking my fist on the why, but I trust in your unfailing love. Despite the wrestling, he's saying, I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing of the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. It's like he's, he's taken a stand right there and says, I don't understand, I'm wrestling, and this is, this is almost like where he's just hanging on, and he's saying, but I trust in you, God. I trust in you. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I, I love that picture. You're alone, it's night, and you are wrestling with God over something. And at some point in time, you say, nope, I trust in you, God. I'm wrestling, I'm fighting, I'm struggling, but I trust in you. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. Oh, that our hearts are that way. As we struggle, as we wrestle, that we can stand on God's promises and say, I trust in you. You know, you, you kind of go back to the wrestling aspect of a, little, of a little kid, and it usually involves bedtime. A three-year-old, come on, it's time to go to bed. And no, I don't want to go to bed, I don't want to go to bed. And you pick them up, and what do they do? The hands are a, a swinging and the feet are a kicking, and that's yeah, their version of wrestling. You know, in some, some ways, sometimes, that's the picture. We're wrestling, we're kicking, we're screaming, and Jesus is holding us. He's not fighting back. He is holding us with his loving arms, and he has this wonderful, gentle embrace. And he's saying, I love you. I died for you, and we're kicking and screaming, and pretty soon we realize, and I, I hope we realize that he's holding us, and he's saying, I love you. You can trust me. You can trust me that your heart rejoices in the salvation, and as you're being held, all of a sudden, you know what? I'm not wrestling anymore. I'm enjoying being in my Savior's arms. And he's saying, trust me. I say, yes, I can trust him. Um, you know, there is one other example. In Psalm 13, you probably can't see it, but um, this is my Psalm 13. It is marked up. It is written all around. It is... Um, questions, comments, there's all sorts of stuff in my Bible right here. 
I cannot tell you the times that I've had to go back and I'm David and I'm crying out to God and I'm saying, why? I, I don't get this. I'm struggling with, I can't tell you the number of tears that have hit this page. So I think we're all like David at times and we all are crying out and the tears are flowing and it's, it's God, why? Why? I'm wrestling, I'm struggling. Oh, I look at my trials and I love them because they've made me stronger. Because through the trials, through the pain, through the Psalm 13, through the wrestling, I can emphatically say, I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise. He has been good to me. Praise God. That's where we want our hearts. These trials, they take us into this struggle, this wrestle with God. And my prayer is, you know what? That you can say, I trust him. I love my salvation, your salvation, and I want to praise God. I sing my praises to him. So, do we go out looking for the wrestle? No. <laughs> trouble will find your own. You don't have to go look for trouble. But, when struggles, trials, wrestling matches come, wrestle God. Know that you can trust him knowing that this will create a deeper faith in your heart more and more like him if you keep your face focused on him. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> James said it's pure joy when you face trials. That is just nuts. But it is. Lord, my prayer is that um, we will go deeper with you. And if that means trials, if that means wrestling with you, if that means struggle, Lord, that's what we want. We want our heart to be more and more like you where we can say, I trust you. I love you and I sing your praises. And so I lift up the congregation here today. If there's some struggling, Lord, that they will know that they can beat on the door and you welcome with them with open arms. In Jesus' name, amen.